got a great crew with us here today. We've got over 180 people on the line uh, and some fantastic panelists and speakers lined up as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's kick things off. All right, so you probably noticed by now that we are using Zoom and your line is muted. But if you have a question, uh, what do you prefer, Greg? Should we put it into chat or Q&A? So today we've got uh, Paige uh, Hudson, who is going to be helping us with the chat. I mean, with the chat and the Q&A. So if you have a long question that's like a paragraph, put it in the chat and Paige, I put it in, the, I'm sorry, put it in the Q&A and Paige will answer it. Other than that, throw it in the chat. And as I teach, uh, and as uh, Nicole, I'm sorry, as Anna and Caitlin teach, we'll answer it as we go. All right. There you go. So yeah, the Q&A is those two little message bubbles on your Zoom menu. That's the best place to put them. Um, I will also enable upvoting so uh, you can vote for your favorite questions. And you can also see other questions that people uh, asked and comment on questions as well. So that's now enabled. And we already got this question from Linda, and I'm sure it'll pop up for many others. Um, yes, you will be receiving a recording of this webinar. You'll get the slides, you'll get any resource links, all that good stuff will be bundled into one email for you that we'll aim to send out today or tomorrow at the very latest. Next slide, please. Okay, so real quick, a little bit about TechSoup. So first of all, if you are new, welcome. It is great to have you. Uh, if uh, you have been around the block with TechSoup many, many times, Great to have you back here. So just a little reminder, TechSoup, we equip change makers with the transformative technology and solutions and skills that they need to improve lives globally and locally. So what does that look like? Well, we've got uh, an extensive donation catalog, which a lot of people know us for discounted software and hardware. Um, we also do training. We have TechSoup courses. Uh, we have services, things like uh, you know Microsoft training um, and how to onboard your team. Uh, we also have an amazing community forum where you get peer-to-peer -peer support from other nonprofits who are working through a lot of similar issues that you're working through through. Um, and what's so cool is that we're in over 200 countries and territories around the world. So you are bound to be supported at every uh, path in your journey along the way to making the world a better place. Uh, and we are super proud to work with our generous donor partners. You know, we've got QuickBook Made Easy. We have ADP here today as well. We'll add a link to our product catalog in the chat in just a sec. So on to the next part, the most exciting part, which is introducing our speakers. So next slide, there we go. So yeah, I'm happy just to give an overview and then maybe should we call out each speaker to welcome themselves just so people can match a name with the face, but we've just got- Just to say hello, just yeah. to say hello, yeah. <laughs> go Excellent. ahead. Excellent. So we've got Anna Davis. We have Caitlin, is it Tolino? Yes, Chilino. Woohoo! Caitlin Chilino, and of course, our TechSoup webinar favorite, Greg Boson. Um, so, yeah, so maybe raise a hand. Um, any other intros or things to say before we dive in today? Caitlin, you don't want people to see you. <laughs> you oh, my looking... camera's on. I think I... I'm frozen. Oh. Uh, uh, all right. Well, let's get it. let's get moving. Is there anything else you want to say? Because I want to get into the content. We've got 204 people on the call. Um, so if you're okay, I'm going to get rolling. Yeah, that's right. you. Cool. Oh, there okay. she is. There, there she, she is. is. Hey, Caitlin. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's see. For those of you that do not know, um, I have a company. Well, first of all, I'm a CPA. And you can just look at the screen. Look at me for a second. Look at the camera here or the screen. So I am a CPA, just like the person who does your 990, who does your audit. And uh, I actually have an accounting firm here in Atlanta. We do, we have around probably 650 nonprofit clients across the country that we do audits, tax returns for. We have tech support where we help nonprofit bookkeepers. We have all kinds of stuff. Um, then I have a company that's called QuickBooks Made Easy. And all we do at QuickBooks Made Easy is teach people that are in the nonprofit world how to use QuickBooks, okay? Uh, we have training products that we sell that are streamable. We have technical support. We have live seminars and webinars across the country. 
We have an upcoming webinar that's happening next month. And I'm really excited about this because I've never remembered to get this set up in time, but this time I did. So, you know, in January, you'll all have to do 1099s. And so uh, if you wanted to get them out of QuickBooks on January the 13th, we're going to show you how to do it with desktop. And on January the 14th, we're going to do it with online edition. So you'll be able to help you real time as you're trying to get those 1099s out. If there's anybody that's a house of worship, we have a two-day webinar series that's coming up uh, on January the 19th and January 20th. Uh, that is a brand new series for us because if, if you're in house of worship, go ahead and put it in the chat. Is anybody a house of worship here? Church, uh, synagogue, mosque? Anybody a house of worship? Just throw it in the chat. Amber is, Pat is. Yes, yeah, so we got a number of you. Wow. Okay, cool. Lisa, you already signed up. So I know you need to figure out how to track stuff. It's very difficult to track your designated funds, restricted funds, all that kind of stuff. We have a two-day webinar just for you guys. So it's very cool. So think about signing up for that. We'll give you the codes to sign up um, uh, at the end of the webinar again today, but because we're going to give you discounts. And let's see. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about today. First, I'm going to start. So I'm Greg. I'm going to start. I'm doing the latest rules on PPP forgiveness because you need to know what's going on right now. And we're going to talk about what your payroll costs are that are includable. Okay. So those two things I'm going to do. Then, you know, when you do forgiveness, you have to include reports. And a lot of the payroll companies offer reports. One of them is ADP. And so we're going to have Anna at ADP actually show us the reports that you'll need in order to apply for forgiveness. And it's kind of cool because ADP has worked with some of the larger banks and they've already gotten pre-approved that these PPP reports, they're going to they're gonna work. Okay. Um, then um, <clears throat> we're going to talk, because we're headed at the end of the year, uh, Anna has some cool checklists to help you out uh, in getting ready for year in W-2s and 1099s. And then that'll, that whole thing will take about an hour. And then the last 15 minutes is just for you guys to ask questions. But if you think of questions while we're in the middle of talking, put them in the chat. If they're quick, I'll answer them immediately. I'll probably take a couple of breaks to take questions as well. We've got Paige on the back end uh, to help with questions also. And I think with that, we're ready to go. And I want to go ahead and do this poll. So this is just a slide, but I want to do it as a real poll. We've got 221 people uh, on the uh, – and it doesn't look like I can do polls. Uh, Anna, I can so launch it you for you, find Greg. that mm -hmm. particular poll, that'd be great. Um, but we've got we 221 go. people on there. There we go. Okay, so I'm assuming if you're on this, you got a PPP loan. So I want to know how much was it, okay? Is it up to 50000 Is it 50000 to 150? Is it 150000 to 1.999999? Or God bless you if it's $2 million or more, okay? <laughs> Anyway, so let's see. Uh, we got 221 people on the call, so we should get most people voting. You let me know, Anna, when you're ready to cut it, because I can't see. We've got about 80% voted so far. Okay, cool. So we'll give it another second or so. And I'll tell you the reason, there's a really important reason why I'm. these are the breakouts. So go ahead and let's see what the answers are. I'm curious to see. Um, there we go. Okay. So 70% of you are sorry, 40% of you or 70 of you have 50,000 or less. You're going to be very happy. There's a short form that you can fill out now uh, that will give you forgiveness. And if you're under 50,000, you do not have to worry about keeping your employee levels up. You can get rid of people and still get 100% forgiveness. Isn't that nice? Okay. Um, if you're between 50 and 150,000, there are 63 of you. There is legislation pending to make it easier for you to get forgiveness. That legislation, nothing's happening it right now because everybody's freaking out about the president and all that kind of stuff. So, and it's Congress, so it's on hold. We'll tell you more about it in a second. Um, we got 43 people that are 150K to 1.999999. You'll have to fill out the full form. It's called a 3508. We'll talk about it in a second. Um, 
Anybody who's two million or more, you'll have to fill out the form also. We've got one person. And what I want to tell that one person is the SBA will be auditing you. Okay. So don't play when it comes to that form. All right. I'm just telling you, anybody over two million, they're auditing. Okay. So they're going to want all the backup. Okay. So we can close that poll now and let's move on. So here's the latest changes. Okay. Oh, here we go. Linda, one of my most. Will you be talking about how and where the IRS is recommending recording this transaction? So Linda, this is for nonprofit organizations. Linda is talking about how if you use the PPP to pay for expenses that you would normally write off of your taxes, you can't write off those expenses. That is still the case now. And this is a nonprofit uh, webinar, Linda, so no, I'm not talking about that. When reporting the number of PPP forgiveness, do I include staff on maternity leave or disability leave? Uh, for purposes of full-time, uh, for full-time employment, that if you're paying them, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so I am, so am I considered registered? Sorry to be a slow student. I don't know what that means, John. So what I'm going to ask y'all to do now, if it's okay with you, because I know that you guys have a lot of questions about PPP, and we're going to give you time to ask those questions, but I've got a nice little presentation, and I want you guys to listen. So I want you to not ask questions for about 10 minutes, okay? Just give me, a, give me, just give me your full attention, okay? All right. All right. Uh, uh, I'll do the one more. Jim. Uh, Jim says we're under 50, but the short form forgiveness application asks for your number of employees before and after why. Who knows? Should I be worried that the forgiveness will be reduced? No, do not worry. As long as you're filling out the 3508S, not the 3508EZ. That's the one you should be filling out, the 3508S. All right. New relaxed forgiveness rules. So the first thing I want to do, so let's just, I want everybody listening. I want everybody to, to follow me here. I want to give you the general overview of how to get forgiveness. There's been four rules all throughout the year. You have to spend 60% of your money on payroll. We're going to talk about what that means. The rest you can spend on rent, utilities, and mortgage interest. We're not going to talk about what that means unless you have questions at the end of the webinar. Um, uh, you can't reduce pay rates more than 25%, and you have to keep the number of employees the same, basically. Can't get rid of people in order to get full forgiveness. That's the general rule. So there are two things you need to know. Thing one, there is pending legislation, June 30, Senate Bill 4117, and July 24th, House Bill 7777, they're both, they say essentially the same thing. It's called the Small Business Forgiveness Act. And it basically, if it's passed, will allow anybody with a loan of 150000 or less to get automatic forgiveness. All you have to do is sign a one-page a, a, um, a one page document. You don't have to give them proof or anything like that. It's wonderful. It's got bipartisan support. What's the latest on it? Nothing. Nobody knows what's going on because nobody's talking about it because all we care about is the nightmare that is American politics. So anyway, so that's where we are. So that's one thing. And why is that important? Because if you have a loan that's 150000 or less, I would wait to apply for forgiveness, okay? I'll tell you that you have lots of time to do it. I would wait to apply to forgiveness because it may be easier later on, okay? Thing two, this is the second thing. This is the thing I was telling you a minute ago. On October 8th, the SBA changed the forgiveness rules for any loans up to 50,000, okay? You still gotta spend 60% on payroll. You still gotta spend the rest on rent, utilities, and mortgage interest. But these other two rules where you keep your rates uh, you don't lower the rates too much or you and, and you keep the employee levels the same you don't have to worry about that anymore you just have to worry about the first two okay so that's kind of the deal with that so zero to 50 i would still wait because it may get even easier but 
I mean, if you know you can get forgiveness, go for it. To fill this out, you fill out a 3508S. This is not the 3508EZ. It's called a 3508S. It's basically a one-page form, basic information. You initial a bunch of statements, you assign it, and you're supposed to have to provide backup to the bank, and the banks may have their own form. This is the form itself, and there's a link where you can download it from the website. That's the whole form. Okay, that's the whole form. And by the way, the dude who was asking, see how it says employees at time of loss applic of loan application and employees at time of forgiveness application. He's concerned if this is less than this, that he's not going to get forgiveness. Not true. Okay, so that's the deal with that. All right, enough of that. Let's see. My mouse is messing up here. All right, so again. These are the, so that, the, I guess that's really all I want to say about that. I'll stop for a second. Does anybody have any questions about, uh, ah, okay. Well, let's, let's, Robin, let's do you now. We'll talk about that. Um, forgivable amount. Oh, well, I think I, I think I have it in the slide. So let me just wait, Robin. Don't, don't ask any more questions, guys. And let me get Robin's answer. Let me get through a few more of the slides here. Sorry. So the four factors, you got to spend it in either an eight or 24 week period. You got to spend it on certain things, payroll and mortgage interest. Uh, the compensation levels have to be maintained and the employees levels have to be maintained. Okay. One thing I wanted to talk about, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to skip that first. Don't worry about these next slides because I don't think they're that important. Okay. When can you file to get forgiveness? That's what I want to skip to. When the bank says you can, okay? There is SBA forgiveness forms. There's a 3508. There's a 3508EZ. And for those that are 50,000 or less, there's a 3508S, okay? But most banks aren't accepting the forms. Instead, they have their own form, okay? So you just got to wait. But at this point, most banks are now accepting forms or they have their own form. This is the question, Robin, that you had. How long do you have to file? Now, listen very carefully, Robin, and everybody else. You have to file for forgiveness no later than 10 months after the last day of the forgiveness period, okay? 10 months after the last day of your forgiveness period, okay? So basically, if you, if you get your loan, the day you get your loan, you have 24 weeks to spend the money. The very last day that you have to spend the money is December 31. That's Robin. That's where your number comes from. So you have to spend the money by the end of this year, okay? So if you got the money before June 30, you have 24 weeks ending on the last day of the 24-week period. If you got the money after June 30, then you just have till the end of the year because 24 weeks is more after June would end in 2021. You got to end on December 31, 20. That's when you have to have all the money spent, okay? So I've got a question. You can put the answer in the chat. Now you have 10 months after the last day of your forgiveness period. What do you think the last day is that anyone will be filing for forgiveness? You can put it in the chat. What's the last day that anybody will be filing for forgiveness? Go ahead and put it in the chat. David got it. Yeah, y'all all are getting it. Okay, good, I'm teaching correctly. Yeah, the answer is October 31 of 2021. So that's why I'm telling you, you have to have the money spent by the end of the year, but you don't have to file for forgiveness until 10 months into the new year. So that's why I'm saying, let's wait, okay? Okay, uh, should you file early? I mean, if you spend all the money, your loan is, is uh, greater than 50 and your staff levels are back up and your staff pay is back up because you still got to do that if your loan is over 50. Um, but even if your loan is 150 or lower, I'd wait. This is what I keep saying because it might get easier for you. Okay. So you could file early now, but you don't necessarily have to. And I would wait. Okay. <laughs> Robin says mind blown. All right. Uh, no, David, they will, well, oh, I see what you're saying. They will be charging interest on the loan, 
Oh, oh no. The interest on the loan, David, when you get your loan forgiven, it, it forgives the interest as well. So the loan starts accruing, but all the interest is forgiven once you get forgiveness. Okay, good question, David. Okay, so um, any questions on when I should file before I move on to what payroll costs should be included? Any questions on when I should file? All right, how are we doing, Paige? Is Paige there? Paige is sure. here. What is it? Because I, I don't see the Q and A. Is there anything I need to talk about that I haven't talked about yet? Yes, there's a actually a couple. Are you What's ready? That? Yeah. One is we have a question of if you can post the two pending legislation bills to the chat. Maybe we oh. follow up with that in a resource, or do you have that? We're not okay. talking. Okay, I see. So basically, uh, you want to know. You want to know what's the you want to read the legislation because nothing's happening with the legislation right now. Um, but yeah, so if you could post this in the chat, I'll give you the number. <laughs> it's um, there it is. So it's Senate Bill S4117. This is what you could do over the holiday. You could read this pending legislation uh, <laughs> and then HR777. Okay, those are the two pills. Uh, Jim has a question in the chat. I ha have to wait till after 1231 anyway, if any of the forgivable expenses were after 10-1, because you need the fourth quarter 941, right? Not necessarily, Jim. What Jim's saying is, I have to give the 941 as proof. Not necessarily. As you'll see, Anna has reports that will be good enough if you go for forgiveness before the quarter is over. All right. All right. <laughs> Tracking legislation is my holiday fun, says Becca. Yeah, totally, totally. All right, so let's get into the more interesting stuff, which is, oh, you said there was one other thing. Sorry, what's the other one? Oh, that's okay. They're starting to roll in in a Rolodex. So if you want to go ahead, we'll, I'll wrap up a little bit and we'll take another, another okay. couple in a second. All right, so everybody, if what I'm going to talk about now is the specifics of what costs can be included in payroll. This is really important. Okay. So I know you might have questions, but let's we, remember we got 15 minutes at the end to answer more questions. So y'all pay attention because I don't want you to miss anything. Okay. All right. So again, third time I'm saying this four factors. One, well, spend in an eight or 24 week period, you got to spend on eligible costs, payroll and other stuff. You got to keep your compensation levels maintained and you have to keep your employees levels maintained. Now, if you're, if you are, your loan is 50 or under, you don't have to worry about parts three and four. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. But if you're over 50, you do. And that is beyond the scope of this webinar. I have webinars where I teach this all the time. If you go to quickbooksbeneasy.com, I'm sure we'll sign up for, a, they'll, we'll, they'll, we'll be doing another one next year. Um, but we're not going to cover about that. What we're covering here is what payroll costs to include, okay? So see, Robin has got this question. My FTE has been reduced by two, but the new newer employee's salaries keeps compensation stable. Any grace period? Oh, yeah, Robin, I will say this. You have to keep the number of employees the same, but it doesn't have to be the same employees. If you get rid of two, but then add new employees... That's okay. Now, if their salaries are higher, no, you have to have people in the seats, okay? But there's a bunch of other ways to get um, uh, to get out of being dinged because your number of employees went down, and that's something we I can talk about it after the uh, the question and answer period. Right now, I just want to talk about payroll costs, okay, and what can be included, okay? First thing. I told you you have to spend 60% on payroll to get forgiveness. Does that mean you have to spend 60% on payroll costs to get any forgiven at all? No, you just get a reduced amount. So basically, if you only spent 50% on payroll, then you won't get all of your money forgiven. You'll get a portion of it forgiven, a pro rata portion. If you spend 60% of your money on payroll, you'll get all of it forgiven, okay? Can you spend more than 60% on payroll and still get it forgiven? Absolutely. 
that was the whole goal for you to spend it on payroll. So you could spend 100% on payroll and still get forgiven. And that's probably what's going to happen with most of you because they only gave you 10 weeks of pay. That's how they figured out what your loan was. But now they're giving you 24 weeks to spend it. And so I don't know how you couldn't spend it all in 24 weeks. So anyway, that's the deal with that. All right. Okay. Now, here's another question I get. What is the first payroll you can include? If your pay period is less often than bi-weekly. So in other words, it's semi-monthly, which means you get paid on the 15th and the 30th, you know, twice a month. Or it's monthly. Or it's even less. If that's you, then 100% of the first payroll paid after you got the money can be included. Now, let me give you an example here. You see, even if part of that first pay covers the, a time before you got the money, you can still include it. So it's money that was paid. It didn't have to be earned during your 24-week period. By the way, your 24-week period starts the moment you get the money. Okay, so when you get that loan, that's when your clock starts ticking. The very next payroll, you can include it all. Okay, here's an example. You got the money on May the 8th of 2020. It's a semi-monthly payroll. Your next payroll is May the 17th. And it's for pay period May 1 through May 15th. Okay. What's the first payroll you may include? May 17th, and you can include absolutely all of it. So you see, even though half of that pay is from before May 8th, you can still include it for forgiveness. Does that make sense to y'all? Somebody put it in the chat and tell me, yes, that makes sense. So you can include all your first pay, okay? You do not have to prorate that first pay. I'll say it again. You do not have to prorate the first pay, okay? All right. Uh, now, if you are bi-weekly, you get paid every other week, every other Friday or something, or weekly, you know, or daily, minutely, <laughs> whatever, you can do that also. You can start with the first payroll after you got the money. So every single person on this call can start and include the very first pay after they got the money. Everyone on this call, okay? But if you are bi-weekly, you can if you choose to, and this gets kind of funky, but basically you can choose to wait and start with the next pay period, okay? So um, I don't know why you would, but you could. So I'm not even going to worry about teaching that, okay? So now the other question is, I've just told you the very first payroll after you get the money, you can include all of it. You don't have to prorate. What about the last payroll, okay? So what about the last payroll of the forgiveness period? Because typically it won't be paid until after the forgiveness period ends. And the way that this, this loan is supposed to be used is it's basically cash basis. You basically get forgiveness when you pay it, not when it's earned, okay? But during the pay period, that last week, you're not going to pay it till after the forgiveness period ends, okay? An example, the forgiveness period is up on 1016. The next pay date is 1023. Oh, I guess we can include it because it's after the my uh, forgiveness period ends, even though the majority of it is for earnings during your forgiveness period. 1023 is after the forgiveness so I guess I can't include it. Some people go, you know what? I'm going to pay them on the 16th up through and including the 16th so I can include it. It's like this game that people talked about a few months ago. And you had the payroll company saying, do you want to do like a short payroll so that you can make sure you can include it for good? That's weird and stupid. Okay. And so now the last payroll of the period can be included even though it's paid after your forgiveness period ends, okay? As long as it's paid by the next payroll date, 
One caveat, you do have to prorate that one, okay? So in other words, I think I have an example here. The forgiveness period ends on 1016. The next pay date is 1023 for 102 through 1018. So only the pay through 1016 can be included. So you get your money, you include every single payroll all through the 24 week period. The one right after it, the next payroll, you prorate that one for the time period that's during your forgiveness period. Does that make sense to y'all? Because it'll be important when we look at these reports in a second. Somebody give me a hey or a yay or whatever. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. So um, here we go. What is a payroll cost? Okay. It's made up of two pieces. Let me stop for a second because we spent so much time talking about time period and now I'm kind of shifting gears and I'm talking about what gets included. Okay. So it's a little bit of a different thing. All right. All right. So what gets included? Cash compensation, which does not mean you paid them in cash. It just means their compensation as opposed to other payroll costs, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay. All right. Uh, and Saba, uh, you'll get that question answered when we get to Anna. Okay. So right now we're going to talk about cash compensation. Okay. All right, what's included? Gross salaries and wages, tips, which is kind of weird, but tips, gross commissions, paid leave, okay? The only time you wouldn't include paid leave is if you've gotten a credit because the person left because of COVID. If you have an employee that leaves because they have COVID or you have an employee that leaves because they have somebody that has COVID, the government will pay 10 days of that person's pay. They give it to you as a credit. Those wages you can include for PPP forgiveness, okay? Uh, yes, Daryl, only W-2, not 1099 pay, exactly, okay? Uh, Michael, so if you take the 24-week period, you can still use 100% on payroll. I thought I saw you had to. You do not have to use any of the other stuff. You have to use at least 60 for payroll, but you can use all 100%, Michael. Okay. Now, for the churches or the houses of worship, if you have a housing allowance, parsonages, all that, that gets included for purposes of forgiveness. What do you all think about that, church people? Isn't that great? Hello? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go a little bit more. Yeah, that's awesome. So payroll eligible. Now, here's the questions you all are asking. What about extra pay? What about a bonus? What about hazard pay? What about back pay? Answer, it's all good. All that matters is when you pay it, okay? What you call it is irrelevant, okay? You could call it I think you're cute, so here's a bunch of money pay. You know, it doesn't matter, okay? So here's a poll. It's not a real poll, so just put the answer in the chat. Which is a pay, which payroll cost, I'm sorry, which is a payroll cost eligible for forgiveness? Which of these payroll costs are eligible for forgiveness? No, David, 1099s are not eligible, just W-2s. All right, overtime pay, back pay, bonus pay, hazard pay, commission pay, all of them. What's the answer? All of the above, okay? So this should fix that question that people always wanna know about what gets included, okay? So I haven't gotten to the other payroll costs yet, but I'm gonna stop for a second. And uh, where, how am I doing, Paige? How's it looking on the back end? We're doing pretty good. We have one question about housing allowance. That's okay, okay, go ahead. What's the question? Uh, Housing allowance not being on the 941, what would you use to prove to the bank that it was paid? Well, probably um, a copy of the canceled check, or uh, if it's not part of their normal wage, then yeah, you would have to show them um, the canceled check that it was paid. And you should have some sort of calculation as how you came up to the housing allowance. Um, and uh, also, you know, if you have like ADP, I know ADP does it, 
uh, you can literally have them put that on there in box 14 so that it shows on the W-2. And then you won't have to worry about it. All right. It's not taxable. All right. So the answer is all of them. So um, this, when you go to fill out your form, and it might be a 3508, or it might be a 3508S, or it might be a 3508EZ, doesn't matter. There's a worksheet that goes along with it. This worksheet, I've noticed, the banks seem to want. Even though they supposedly have their own forms, they end up wanting this worksheet or something like it. Uh, basically, it's a list. I'm going to zoom in on this. It's a list of your individual employees. And what I just talked to you about is what gets included in cash compensation. Okay. Now, I've got one more thing I want to talk to you about when it comes to cash wages. And um, that is anybody who makes more than $100,000 a year. If they, anybody made more than $100,000, any of your employees made more than 100 k in 2019, well, let me tell you something. The PPP ain't going to let you pay them more than 100 k they're not going to let that count, okay? They're like, look, if they're making more than 100K, screw them. They only should make 100K and no more. So that's all they're going to give you help for, okay? So I apologize if I get blunt like that. I don't mean to offend anybody. It just keeps things interesting. All right. So what does this mean? It means that if you have an employee that makes more than $100,000, then when you're figuring out how much counts for PPP, 24 weeks of pay will say, if somebody makes more than 100K, the amount forgiven on PPP is 100K divided by 52 weeks, 1923 a week times 24 weeks, $46,154. My point, ain't nobody getting forgiven for more than $46,154, okay, period. So as a matter of fact, that's why when you look at this worksheet, basically it lists your employees, their social, this is the wages. Anybody who makes more than 100 goes down here in a separate location. And then there's the 46,154. That's the max you can take for that person, assuming you still pay them more than 100K. Okay, enough of that. Thank you, Janet. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, what else do we got here? We're doing good on time. I got about nine more minutes and then I want to stop for a second because this is boring, right? I mean, it's not boring, but you know, you're sitting here watching a video and I don't know. Who wants to watch Zoom for more than 45 minutes? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, all right. So there are other payroll costs that you can include. I mean, shoot, after payroll, you might not even need to include any more to get 100% forgiven, but... Em now, this is another question people always ask. Employer-paid health insurance, employer-paid retirement, and employer-paid state tax. Employer-paid. I think I'll say that again. Employer-paid, okay? It's not the money that's withheld from the person's check. You didn't pay that. The employee did. It's only the employer stuff, okay? Let me give you an example. We have a pay stub here. The gross is 2,500. There's federal tax, FICA tax, state tax, health insurance is deducted, 403B is deducted for retirement. The net pay is 1,500. What is eligible for forgiveness? 1,500, 2,500, 2,850. What's eligible for forgiveness? Put it in the chat. That's right. 2,500 is the answer. That's exactly right. Now I'm going to give you another one. Remember, employer paid health insurance. So here comes another example. Gross is 2,500. Federal, it's the same paycheck. The difference in this example is the employer matches. The employer deducts 150 in health insurance, puts in their own 200. They pay 350 to the health insurance company. Employer matches your 200, they pay 400 into retirement. What gets included here? Anyone know? Marlene got it right the first time. Marlene, you win $10,000, Marlene. 
Uh, and Anna at ADP is going to pay you that $10,000. No, that's. Uh, no, I don't know about that, Greg. I don't know if we <laughs> signed up for that when we jumped on webinar. <laughs> so it's 2,900. So I see some people have some different answers. So I want you to understand gross pay always gets included. That's 2,500. And then the employer paid health insurance, which is 200, and the employer paid. 403B gets included too. So that's 2,500 plus 200 plus 200. So that's going to be 2,900. So that's what's been forgiven. Okay. Uh, does dental life disability count if employer is paid? Uh, dental, yes. Life, no. Disability, I don't think so, but I'm not for sure. Dental, yes. Glasses, yes. Eye, yes. Ear, yes. <laughs> Pinky toes. Pinky toes are specifically excluded. I'm kidding. That is ridiculous. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, this is the form that you fill out that probably there'll be a bank form that's like it, but that's where you put your wages. This is where you put your employer paid health insurance. Um, let's see. This, I put zero, this is where you put your employer retirement. So this is your wages. This is your employer health insurance. This is your employer retirement. This is your employer state and local tax paid. Uh, what do you think that includes? What is included in state and local? What is an employer paid state tax? What's an employer pay? Yeah, it's just state unemployment. And maybe like in some states like California, where you have to pay an extra tax to the state, that would be included too. But it's basically just state unemployment. So, and state disability in some, in some, uh, it's interesting. If you pay disability to the state, you can include it. If you pay disability to an insurance company, I don't think you can. That's right, Karen, no FICA, no FICA, okay? All right, there's your total payroll costs right there, All right? So uh, it's 245, I did that perfectly. How exciting is that? So um, I'm gonna um, stop for a second. And I think what I'm gonna do to kind of break this up so I'm not giving you my sales pitch all at the same time, um, I want to uh, go to, let's see, where is my slides? Because we need to stop for, oh, it's right there. All right. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Where is it? And there it is. All right. So on January the 13th and January the 14th, we are going to be doing a webinar, and I've never done it before in January, and I've needed to, on how to get your 1099s out of QuickBooks. Now, a lot of you at QuickBooks Desktop, so you'll want to go to the one on January the 13th. It's normally $99. It's an hour and a half. Um, we're going to go through the whole thing and answer every one of your questions, and hopefully it'll be as interesting. Um, it's 99 normally. With this code, TSDEC30, it's only $69. If you are a QuickBooks Online user, it's the next day, January the 14th, and this will give you plenty of time to get your 1099s out. It's regular $99 with the code TSDEC30. Again, it's only $69, and we'll send you the codes afterwards, okay? Um, I'm going to do, uh, let's do, let's do the two polls. Uh, let's do the poll on the newsletter, and then after that, we'll do the poll on the payroll, and then I'll send it over to you, Anna. So uh, if you okay. could... Yeah, go ahead and do the poll on the newsletter, the quick tips thing. I'll do that. All right, I appreciate that. So once a month, we have an e-newsletter that comes out. We don't sell this list to anybody. We don't bother you with a bunch of stuff. It's just once a month, it's a little quick tips newsletter, teaches you something about QuickBooks. It's absolutely free. Basically, all it is is a link to a video where I show you something about QuickBooks and it just kind of lets you know what's going on with us. Um, I'd like to know if you're interested in signing up for it. And if so, we'll sign you up for it. It's, you can always opt out later. 
Um, and then you can see me every single month. But uh, so anyway, so you can answer yes or no, and I'll just give it a second for you guys to answer. Um, and uh, then uh, let me know when you think you can move on to the next poll. Nicole. Let's see, I think it's we're at seventy percent. Okay, we'll give it another second or so, and then we'll move on to the other poll. So. Uh, I'm excited about this 299 thing though, because um, I know that people are going to want it. It's, it's helpful. Um, all right. So the other thing is uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out of here is uh, the other poll. I want to know what payroll service you're with right now. So uh, we've given you a lot to choose from, <laughs> but if it's none of these, then go ahead and put the payroll service in the chat. We've got ADP payroll. We have QuickBooks Payroll, we have Paychex, we have SurePay, we have Gusto, we have Paycor, we have Corporate Pay, we have Patriot. Your bank, I know Wells Fargo, Bank of America, SunTrust, some of the banks do their own payroll. I think they do a horrible job with it. Uh, OnPay is another one. Uh, so what is that, 10? So that's a lot. Uh, and if it's none of those, then go ahead and put it in the chat. Let me look in the chat and see if anybody, some people just, you might just have your account your accountant do it. Yeah, a local accounting firm. Here's one called Checkmark Payroll, Dynamic HR, not heard of that. So Linda, QuickBooks and Gusto, she does both. That's interesting. All right, so how are we doing on the polls for that? See, we're at 54%. Okay, so let's give it just another minute. Prime Pay, Ceridian, uh, In Focus. Uh, <laughs> I just do it. <laughs> Somebody put uh, In House. Somebody does use Square Payroll. We were looking at that before. I decided to take them off the list because I didn't think anybody did them. Uh, David doesn't have a program for it. All right, let's move. Let's see what the answers are so far. All right, so, so that's interesting. 72 of you use QuickBooks to do your payroll. Uh, 22 of you are using ADP to do your payroll. That's interesting. And then the next is paychecks. So uh, ADP is definitely a perfect timing. All right, cool. All right, so uh, I'm going to do a couple slides here, and then I'm going to turn it over to Anna. Um, and Anna, you can uh, direct me on what to push here. But So the next thing that I want to talk about is, let me get this back on the screen here. Mm -hmm. OK. And this is something that everybody's wondering. It's like, what do I have to give them as proof of this payroll? You know, I think it's quite interesting, right? And so, uh, of course, nobody knows. Um, but anyway, here's the documentation. Uh, first of all, you need to understand, you borrowed the money from the bank, not the SBA. So the bank is ultimately going to be sitting in the driver's seat for what they want from you and what they'll accept, not the SBA. Now, as I said earlier, Anna... Uh, has worked, ADP has worked with uh, some of the major banks to kind of get pre-approval for some of the forms, okay? Uh, I have thought about th that, Doria, I have. Um, uh, it's not easy to do that. Uh, all right, some things uh, they will likely ask for. Other things they're going to require you to have them just in case. Uh, and whatever documentation you provide to the bank when you fill out your online application, it'll probably be an online application, you'll upload some stuff. You need to keep those documents for six years and keep them electronically. Six years either after you got forgiveness or six years after uh, your loan was paid back, okay? If you, if you ended up keeping some of it as a loan. So here's what I think. Um, to prove out payroll compensation itself, um, bank statements showing the pay drafts, tax forms like 941s. This is where somebody was saying we have to wait till after the year is over because they have to get a 941. Um, and payroll journals from third parties, payroll service reports that show the amounts earned and paid. Okay. Also, the average number of hours if you need to do that. Um, the thing is, is that this list was put out by the SBA as a suggestion list, but we are way past that, okay? Because now we've got these payroll companies that are creating reports that the banks are accepting, okay? 
Now, when it comes to your other payroll costs, which is basically employer paid health insurance, which includes dental, uh, employer paid retirement, and employer paid state tax, you know, the state tax you can show uh, based on payroll forms, but the health insurance and the retirement, unless you've gone through your payroll company to get the insurance or the retirement, you're just going to have to give them proof of payment, receipts, maybe canceled checks, maybe statements from the insurance company, retirement plan receipts, canceled checks, et cetera. Okay. So having said that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Anna, and, um, and tell us what you do for ADP, Anna. Sure. Thanks, Greg. Um, hi, everyone. Super happy to be here with you guys today. So like he said, my name is Anna Davis. I've been at ADP for almost five years now, exclusively working with um, CPAs like Greg and helping their clients in that nonprofit and small business type of space. Um, now I have transitioned into a sales executive role, which is just a fancy way of saying that I manage a team of 10 sales associates who did what I used to do. So um, I affectionately like to call myself Michael Scott where I just manage a bunch of um, really fun and outgoing um, people in an office. But, um, you know, talking with Greg and talking with Caitlin, we tried to figure out a way that would best show how ADP can help you guys when it comes, or even whatever payroll provider you use, when it comes to pulling these reports for that PPP forgiveness. So Greg, you can start clicking through some of those bullets. We do have about 12 to 15 different PPP specific reports available to clients through the ADP portal. Um, that's that PPP forgiveness report, which will show you know, your entire cash compensation through that forgiveness period. We can break it down month by month. Um, we can help with the FTE equivalents and even do custom reporting if your bank is asking for things specific or if you need to do that prorated payroll. I think I saw a question come out in the chat. Does ADP help with the prorated payroll calculation costs? Yes, we do. Um, I actually, Greg, I have a nice ADP client of mine who gave me their login access. So instead of using those demo links I showed you, I can share my screen and you guys can actually see exactly what it would look like inside of an ADP payroll portal. I'll walk you guys through where you can find those reports. And cool. even you can apply and do that um, forgiveness application directly through the ADP portal. Since we already have all your data, it'd be filled out anyway for you guys. And those of you, so if you could give her access so she can share her screen, do I need to stop my share in order I, for her to start? Yeah, I think if I click share screen, it's yep. going to stop sharing yours. Okay, perfect. So, so um, and see. those of you that aren't with ADP, um, I still think that this is valuable because you're going to get an example of what these reports are going to look like because they pretty much look the same for any of the payroll companies. I don't know about the QuickBooks PPP payroll reports. I don't know how good they are. Um, the last I checked, they weren't that great, um, but it lets me know that I probably need to do a webinar on that. But anyway, go ahead with uh, payroll. Thanks, Greg. With ADP. So this is the ADP portal. This is, um, if you're a client, something familiar to what you guys have seen before. We do, and most other payroll companies, they will say PPP reports, you know, really bold, big letters next to, you know, those reports that are specifically created. So you should be able to find them, no problem. We do have a COVID-19 landing page. So this has everything around resources to help your businesses, having to fill out the forgiveness application, if you've changed your period update, or um, if there's any other, you know, frequently asked questions or resources that you might need. But obviously, we're here to talk about forgiveness in those reports. So directly in our reports homepage, if you go under the payroll, you can start to see where it says CARES SBA PPP, the specific PPP um, reports here. So we can go into monthly payroll cost, employee detail. But a big one, obviously, is the loan forgiveness payroll cost. So Greg, I'm going to use the example that you used earlier. Say you got your loan on May 8, 2020. We'll calculate that 24 week period and then ADP will pull the payroll, the gross pay. If it's, you know, if they had the Family First Cares Act, which is if obviously they had um, a loved one or themselves of it as an employee out for coronavirus, if there's any pay over $100,000 and then calculated. If there is, they'll calculate it out. So you'll be able to see right here the SBA gross pay 
that would be the gross pay that is forgiven. So it'll calculate the employer taxes on the state and local. If you do have your health insurance or your retirement integrated with your payroll provider, we would be able to calculate those costs as well. So then at the far corner, you'll have your total SBA payroll cost. So this is showing you from an entire um, employee standpoint, we can break it down per pay period. If Let's you need uh, that hold on one second. I want to, because I, I think this is such a valuable report right here. I just want to tie it into the way that I taught, if you could. So Perfect. this first column that says gross pay. So it's the gross pay for that time period. Now this pay is every single pay that occurred during that 24 week period. So it doesn't include that very last pay that was paid after the pay period ended. If you need that, then you'll want to get a custom report. But my guess is most people won't even need to add it. So this is your gross pay. Now, notice this is, I told you that if you had a person who left because they had COVID for 10 days, they you can get a credit back on your 941. And so you'd have to reduce that out of the gross wage there because the government paid for that. Here is the excess over 100. So if any of these numbers uh, on the gross pay column, like if you like that last one, Jeremiah Yates, 5,371, 31. If that was 65,371, then it would subtract out the excess so that that column that says SPA gross pay would only have that $45,000 cap on it. So that SPA gross pay, 122, that's the number. And the other thing that the payroll companies should be able to give you is the state employer taxes pay, which again, we said is SUI, and there it is, $17.63, okay? So those are the two numbers that you'll probably be getting from the report. Now, this report has been approved by at least some of the major banks, correct? That's correct. So Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and BB&T have all approved this report, and you know, ADP had been one of the leaders when it came to applying for the PPP loan in the first place. So I know more smaller and local banks, especially here in Atlanta, Georgia, have also, um, you know, been able to take this as proof and not need further verification. So well. you don't need the payroll journals. You don't need the 941s. You don't need the cancel. If this report came from ADP, you're good to go. Yep. Okay. And so you okay. see the total and the far, far column, your SBA payroll cost, that includes your gross pay, your employer taxes, and then if the health benefit or retirement plan cost were coded into the payroll, they would show up here as well. If it's not, the beautiful thing is, is you can export it to Excel and add those numbers in here. Really? So you could conceivably tell your payroll company, tell ADP, this is how much I paid for each one of these. And you could log it in and then it would appear on this report. That's correct. And then they wouldn't even ask for that. Well, then that's the answer, right? That would be the easiest. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it, depending on what your bank needs, we do have a few different reports in here. So I know some people have questions around full-time equivalents. Well, I picked the wrong one. Stop. Um, can you go back to can you go back to the listing of reports again? Because somebody specifically wanted to see. Okay. Uh, there's all the reports. Now click on that main one that we chose. Or I just point to it. That's one. the main one that we chose. Somebody, Becca, wanted to know how do we add in those? Do we call it in if we want to tell y'all like what the employer paid health insurance, or do we go into the portal and do it? So it's really up to you. I know as small business owners, you guys can be pretty busy. So if it's easier to call in and let somebody know I need to add my employer paid health insurance, our um, client services team can do it. But you can also add it yourself under our earnings and deductions tab. You can come in here, you can click add an earning, and you can add that you know employer paid health insurance either as a reimbursed expense or a standard earning directly in our ADP portal. But it won't mess up. Y'all won't tax on it or anything. This is just for no, reporting on a W-2. It would just be for reporting. That's correct. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. I don't All want right. to get too into the weeds in it just because my client was so nice as to let me get into his portal. I don't want to mess anything up. In okay. Here. All right. <laughs> but Let's move on. We've got another, I can give you another like 
three or four minutes before we yep. started doing the question and answer things. Absolutely. The only other thing I was going to show you is exactly how easy it is to do that 3508S or 3508EZ directly through ADP. So you just pick your period, you pick your dates covered, you put in the total amount of the loan, and it takes you step by step through that form. And if ADP has the data, just like we showed on that loan forgiveness cost, it will automatically fill in those numbers for you guys. So again, just taking some of that guesswork out of those pesky. And, but that form also has lines for rent and ins rent paid and uh, other expenses. Right. So you would so, have to enter those. Are there places to enter those? Yes. So form? it's just like the actual form. So if ADP doesn't have the data, the data is not going to show up and you can manually enter it or adjust it if you need to. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to start sharing your screen again, yep. Greg, because I don't know how to give you back control. Yep. 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 So I can take I you guys just through those year end checklists and we can open it up for Q and A. Okay. I'm sharing now. I think I'm sharing now. Am I sharing I, now? Yep. I got you back. So I see a question. Are employers charged a fee to prepare additional ADP reports? No, absolutely not. You've got custom reports. You can create as many as you want every single time you want to do them. Um, there's no additional fee there. So um, the year in checklist for payroll, I do want to just go over some quick things to note before getting into the end of 2020 and then in the beginning of 2021, just some things to look out for since this year is a little bit different. Now, this next piece is not just PPP. This is general, okay? So everybody kind of shift gears. We're talking about just general year-end payroll, getting ready for W-2s and 1099s and stuff. All right, All right. go ahead. So what to do today, what we need to focus on before we're in 2021, obviously before your last payroll of the year, please make sure all of your employee, your 1099 contractor information is correct, especially their addresses. Make sure all the employee totals are correct and please record any of the FFCRA or CARES Act earnings before the end of the year. So if you had an employee who had COVID that was out for two weeks and maybe you recorded it as regular sick leave, recode that and make sure you code it as a FFCRA leave. ADP has specific earning codes that you can add to track it in there. That way you do get that 941 credit and that tax credit back. Make sure you're reporting your fringe benefits, your healthcare coverage, um, you know, what the employer has paid if it needs to show up on any W-2 boxes. And then the big one this year, you guys, is prepare your payroll processing for Christmas and New Year's Day. The last two Friday pay periods of the year our national holidays, which means the banks are closed. So the big one is New Year's Day. That Friday, January 1st, if you're trying to pay your employees, make sure you're looking to pay them on Monday the 4th rather than the 1st because banks are closed. It'll be hard to get direct deposit through. And if you pay them a day early, that will go into their 2020 wages rather than their 2021. So it could mess up forgiveness. It could mess up a whole lot of things with reporting if you're expecting those wages to hit for the new year. And then the same thing with quick Christmas, make sure that everybody's money goes out on time. You just don't wanna have anybody wake up Christmas morning who's supposed to get paid and then not get their pay. Um, so that is the big things to focus on before the year end and just make sure that all of your information on the company side is correct as well. The business address, you know, you've got all the right, if it's a suite versus a, you know, a unit number, things like that in there. Um, let's, let's move on to this yep. one. And then the last thing is obviously when you're going into 2021, before your first payroll of January or February in the new year, make sure if you have retirement plan catch up contributions that those have stopped. And if there are any changes to state minimum wage or state unemployment insurance that you have those recorded and they're noted so, so that way, going into the new year, you don't have to worry about any tax changes and updating them halfway through. Great. So the only other thing that I want to say, and then it's all, and then it's y'all's show. You're going to ask questions. We're going to answer them live. Is uh, if you're thinking about changing a payroll, your payroll company, the best day to start is January the first for obvious reasons. And so it's December the fifteenth now. I think every single solitary one of you need to assess your payroll and see whether or not you might be able to get better or less expensive service if you change. Now, 
I am suggesting ADP because they have an offering through TechSoup. Um, and if you go to that uh, website uh, for TechSoup, and I'll do that right now. So if you go to TechSoup and you'll just do a search and you just type ADP, it'll take you to the offerings. And then Anna, did you want to tell them what the deal, how this works? Yeah. There's one, one off. Well, go ahead. You, you talk. Oh, so it depends. Yeah. ADP's prices fluctuate depending on how often you process payroll. But just for a general note, it is more than a 25% discount off of any other price you're going to see by going to ADP's website if you go outside of TechSoup. Um, so if you process, you know, more than once a month, you can expect it to be around $30 per process. And if it is once a month, it'll be around $70 a month. So it's much less expensive than you would otherwise pay. And that's been the big problem that people have had with ADP because they're huge, they're corporate, and they're expensive. But you also know you're getting the best. And so when we were able to convince ADP to work with TechSoup, we were able to really get, um, basically, basically get the best of both worlds. So I won't push it anymore, but if you are thinking about doing it, um, then uh, I do think that you should look at ADP. And I think every single one of you should reassess your payroll for sure. So um, is there anything else you wanted to say, Anna, before we do the questions? Um, no, I'm seeing a couple things in the chat. If you're already ADP customers, I think Greg has Caitlin and I's information. He can share that with you guys if it's not already out there and we're happy to help reassess. If you do monthly and biweekly, obviously we're gonna make sure that those costs, um, you know, we come up with a solution that's beneficial. We'd probably just put on a biweekly frequency. That way you're not being billed twice. But um, no, I just appreciate the time um, that we got to spend with you guys and, you know, look forward to do more of these with you in the future, Greg. So let's stay on for a few minutes longer than we normally do so we can get these questions answered. So I'm gonna look at the chat first to see, um, Alyssa, if you run out of money, say uh, 20 after week 20, and it only covers part of payroll, how do you show backup of that? If you run out of money, say week 20, it only covers part of payroll. Well, what you do is you say what your full payroll is. It's not like you give them a report that shows you the part that was paid by PPP. You give the full payroll amount. And then what happens is the, um, uh, the form that you fill out will say, okay, well, even though you paid more, your loan was this amount, so that's the maximum amount of forgiveness you're going to get, okay? So that's kind of how that works. Let me put my little thing over here. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, let's see. This is cute. Ashley wanted to know, Anna, we do our own payroll. Is it possible to work with ADP simply for the purposes of filling out the PPP loan forgiveness application? So I... I'm going to say no. That's one of the advantages you have of working with a payroll company. Uh, although, Anna, if you want to give her your phone number, maybe you could just do it for her. But um, <laughs> Okay, Lawrence, um, what was the name of the last form for filling out the 3508S? So it's a, it's a 3508 Schedule A worksheet. And so uh, that's the form that I had pulled up here. Uh, let's see. Our employers, no, you already did that. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in the chat here? Uh, let's see. Uh, Robert wants to know, she, they, he used paychecks. Does anybody know if they have similar reports? I'm sure they do. I, I can't believe they wouldn't. Um, yeah, they've got something similar. Jim uh, Glazier, can any wages or salaries be forgiven if they were paid by direct government grants? Okay, so I'm glad you brought this up. You cannot use the same money in two different pots. You can't say, I used PPP to pay this person's salary, and then I use this grant to pay the person's salary. So what people are doing is they're calling these grant agencies, usually if they're foundations, and you say, look, I don't really need your money this month for payroll. Can we use it for something else? And they've been real nice about it. But if you're talking about a government grant, if it's a federal government grant, they're not being so nice. Okay, so you may not be able to double dip on that. Okay, uh, let's see. Same thing Becca said. How do we navigate amounts or salaries paid by other grants? So same deal. 
this is a grant like any other grant. And just like you couldn't count pay for grant one and grant two, you can't count pay for PPP and then grant one. Can't do that. Um, let's see. Um, Saba wanted to know if this offer is for new ADP clients only. So, and I guess, Caitlin, you should at least come on because Caitlin, are you the, you're the rep that they may be talking to. Is that right, Caitlin? Yes. So I am the direct point of contact um, as soon as they sign up for ADP through the TechSoup website. I okay. receive directly all of their information and their contact info. Um, so yes, like Anna was saying, the sign up on TechSoup is for new ADP clients that are not currently on ADP, but want to use it. Um, and like Anna said, if, you know, if you're a current client, um, you know, we can get you my contact info and kind of see what we can do to reevaluate um, the pricing you currently have. Cool. All right. So uh, Jack Donnelly, uh, for the first pay period of the forgiveness, I read that you can count the day that the paychecks were distributed. We always distribute checks on the first Wednesday of the month, but the date the checks is of the first of the month, our loan entered our bank on Wednesday. Oh, good God. Um, May 6th. Can we count? Can we include the checks dated May 1st that were distributed on May 6th? I don't know the answer to that question. It sounds like you can because they didn't get the money until the 6th, even though they're dated the 1st. Sounds like you can. Um, I don't have an answer for you. Um, let's see. Uh, Stephanie, if we do have Fed funds for the same time frame, should we just mark up the payroll report to show what expenses were paid by another funding source? Yeah, I think you're going to have to adjust the payroll report down. I think you are. Uh, and they'll be impressed that you even were honest. I mean, to be completely blunt with you, these banks aren't going to pay any attention to any of this stuff. They just want it off their back as much as you do. They don't, they're not making any money off of it, right? They get a little admin fee and that's the end of it. And they get it regardless. Um, so we are a nonprofit private school who was mandated to close. Do we fall under the, uh, uh, the FTE safe harbor? So I can talk about that just for a second because a lot of people have questions on it. So basically you're supposed to keep your number of employee, your employee levels when you apply for forgiveness, they have to be the same supposedly as when you uh, as when COVID started, which means you can dip below, but as long as when you apply for forgiveness, they're back up to the way they were before, then you should be okay. Of course, if you're less than 50,000, you don't have to worry about this rule at all. But anyway, so one way of getting out of this is if you get the rate back up right before you apply for forgiveness. Another way of getting out of this is if the reason why your employee level went down is because somebody quit or somebody was fired uh, because they sucked, you know, and you couldn't find anybody to replace them, or maybe you laid someone off, you tried to get them to come back, but they refused to, that's not your fault. As long as you made a good faith effort to try and find a replacement that was qualified and you couldn't, you'll be able to get out of that FTE reduction. And then if you're, because of some agency, a governmental agency has said, you know what, you have to close, uh, that's why you had to let people go, the FTE rule won't apply to you either. You'll be able to get out of it that way. Okay, so yes, that should work. All right, so uh, let me see if there's anything huge here. Okay, uh, synagogue with school, employment, dribbles, employment drops in the summer, then back in fall to almost May levels. Is FTE okay, then back in fall? Yeah, by the time you apply, you should be fine, Robert. Plus you're a seasonal organization. There's special rules for y'all for comparing FTEs. Um, Again, it's kind of beyond the scope of this. Uh, so I want a, uh, we've got, we still have 178 people on the call, Anna, by the way. So I think people liked it. Uh, so I want to bring Paige on the phone uh, just for a second to let me know, is there anything major we need to tell him before we get rolling here? Cause I'm about to end. Not from my end. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't want to talk card. about your personal life or anything? Uh, I don't know if they got time for all that, Greg. <laughs> all right. Okay. So um, this webinar for Houses of Worship, <laughs> David, I'm speechless, speechless because all the workers are paid through 1099. I do not know what to do at this point. David, quit your job, leave the country. All right. <laughs> no, I, I, no I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so what about the EIDL? Can you talk about that? I will for a second, and then we'll get going. There's still 174 people on the call. So I'm glad you brought this up because people get really confused about this. So when COVID broke, the first thing that happened was the SBA said, oh, my God, we got to get money out. And so they had this EIDL advance. And you went in and you said, my name is Joe and I have four employees and boom, they gave you money, $1,000 per employee. That money, it's called an EIDL advance. You can keep that money, okay? Now, now listen very carefully here because people always get confused about this. Say you had four employees, you got $4,000. It's an advance. It's supposed to have been advance, an advance on your PPP loan. So say you got $4,000, they deposited it in your account. Then you went and got a PPP loan. Of course, it was a big fat nightmare. You had to go through your bank. It was an ordeal. We all hated it. Anyway, you got approved for $50,000. What the bank was supposed to do is only give you $46,000. They were supposed to look at the SBA and said, you already got $4,000 advanced. We're giving you $46,000 for a total of fifty. dollars they didn't do that because everybody was freaking out. Nobody had time to figure it out. So you got approved for 50. Here's 50. Now you got four advance. You were approved for 50. So you got 50. Now you got 54,000 when you were only approved for 50. So you can keep that 4,000. You can keep it. But of that 50, when you apply for forgiveness and you say, I spent 50. They're going to say, congratulations, you're approved for forgiveness for $46,000, and they're going to make you give $4,000 back, okay? Does that make sense to y'all? Because they only approved you for $50, you got four as an advance, you got $50, that's $54, they're going to make you give four back of that $50, okay? If you got the advance and never applied for a loan, oh, you can keep that money, period. Now I'm going to keep it on going. Then there was this other program. It's a loan directly through the SBA. This loan, it maxed out at $150,000 for most people. This loan was crazy. You fill out a form, another form. You don't hear anything. And then all of a sudden, I get an email one day saying, you're approved for $150,000. And you take that money. It's a loan, OK? And it has to be paid back. And it don't have nothing to do with PPP. And it don't have nothing to do with that advance. It's a loan. Okay. How many of you got it? How many of you got it? Anybody got a loan like that? It's 2.75% interest for a nonprofit. And you've got like 26 years to pay it back or something like that. It's awesome. Yeah. So um, anybody, Lawrence, was able to keep the 10. But if you then got a PPP loan, you had to, you couldn't keep, you, you had to pay back less. You got, you couldn't keep all the PPP loan. All right. Anyway, so that's the deal with that. Does, is that what you mean by talking about it? I'll assume it, I'll assume it is. So I'm going to end by looking at, by this, because this is the thing I think is most important. And then I'm going to let you take us out. Nicole, what did you think? Did you enjoy yourself? Did you learn anything? Are you awake? Such a blast. This is a <laughs> new arena for me, but I feel like I'm becoming a quick expert myself. All right, cool. And I've got a song just for you that I'll play for a few <laughs> seconds so we say goodbye. All right. So, um, oh, what do you want me to do? Do y'all have some way of saying goodbye to everybody? Nah, we can just, however you want to close <laughs> out, how, you know what to do. Okay, I'll include all right. a survey link and we'll call it a day. Okay, well, thank you very, very much for listening. Uh, please go to my website. It's quickbooksmadeeasy.com. And here you can sign up for the webinars. And I guess I'll just go to the QuickBooks Made Easy website, which I never did go to. So you can see it, QuickBooks Made Easy website right here. And here is the website. So then you can learn and have fun 
And if you go to webinars right here, boop, this is where the webinar is right there. $99 normally, $69 for you. The church is $189 normally. And with the coupon, I think it's $159 or $169. I can't remember. All right. Oh, good. Pat's not dreading this anymore. All right. So you give us a feeling word in the chat before you go. And then, Nicole, this song is for you. <laughs> 